us direct or collect 386-1161 or on your cell at star 1070. It's Joe Eastingwood in the CFAX Newsline on CFAX 1070. Sitting in from A-Channel News, Stephen Andrew. Good morning. Uh, I've been kind of uh, teasing you that we were going to be announcing some of the candidates running for the position of mayor over the capital region this week. We're certainly going to be doing that in just a second. We've got another candidate coming up tomorrow on the program. You know, as I was mentioning yesterday, I think it's important that if candidates are going to be running, that they should really try to declare as early as they possibly can. I mean, the big the big political tactic is to wait until uh, a couple of months before the election. The reason for that being, obviously, that uh, the last time that uh, you, the voter, has an opportunity to question the candidate um, means the less times that they can really kind of trip up and make mistakes. And uh, I applaud those that are going to step up and make the announcement and, and give you enough time to review their their resumes, uh, what they stand for, and, and give you an opportunity to get to know them, question them, and, and really find out, indeed, if this is the person that you want representing you, either be it on city council or school board. And uh, that's another discussion that we'll be having for another day because, I mean, most school board budgets are bigger than most municipalities, by the way. Or, um, you know, uh, where, where you want to go uh, with this. It, I think it's a big I think it's a big issue, and, and local politicians play a huge role in the capital region. I mean, forget the fact that I think there's way too many local politicians. Uh, again, that'll be a, a story for another day, but, I mean, it, it, uh, it's important. I was talking with Dean Fortin, who's the councillor, widely rumoured to be running for mayor in Victoria. He says he hasn't made a decision yesterday. He didn't want to come on, on the program, but uh, he's in the position where he's certainly thinking about it. We should be hearing from him probably in the next couple of months. That should be no surprise to anyone in the political circles, but um, good for him. I mean, certainly he's not going to stay um, closed mouth about this. It, it, it's, it's a huge commitment to take on this uh, running, especially if you're running for the position of mayor. I mean, you come under a lot of scrutiny. So, one of the candidates running in the capital region in the uh, area of Central Saanich is Sean McNulty. He has a website up, by the way, and I've actually been tracking it over the past uh, couple of months, seanformayor.com. Uh, and he's joining us now in the studio, and we'll be taking your questions. If you live in Central Sandage and you want to ask uh, Sean some questions this morning as to why he's running, here are the numbers, 386-1161, star 1070. You can also send us uh, written questions in to talk at cfax1070.com. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. First of all, um, tell, tell us a bit about yourself. I mean, you're involved in Island View uh, Golf um, What's the full name of your... I do Golf Center. Go, uh, uh, golf Center, a driving range up there that people will see as they're going up the Pape Highway. How long have you been doing that? What's, what's your background first? Well, I'd describe myself as a hardworking young individual. Uh, as for a, a living, like you say, I'm the general manager of Island View Golf Center. I'm also an estimator at Five Star Paving. I also serve on the board of directors for the Chamber of Commerce. I'm the president of the Sandwich Peninsula Toastmasters, so I'm very active in the area. I'm big into physical fitness. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I attend the gym six days a week. My health's very important to me. And in terms of leisurely activities, I'm a pilot. I have uh, passed my practical pilot's tests, and now I just have to do the written, and I'll be a licensed recreational pilot. I also love boating out around the Sandwich Peninsula waters. It's beautiful out there, and I really enjoy it. And I guess the last, uh, and probably one of the most important things to me is reading. I'm a, I'm a big reader, and I believe life's about the pursuit of knowledge, and I pursue knowledge very actively. Mm -hmm. And certainly on your website, you bring up a number of articles and, and, and novels that you've been reading. Mm -hmm. Why run for mayor? What's, what what, what one issue was it that really just jumped out at you and said, you know what, this is something that I need to do? Well, it wasn't any one single issue. It was actually a cum cum accumulation of a few, and uh, they're the pillars of our campaign. The first issue is the revitalization of the commercial cores, which is the Brentwood Bay area and the new Sandston Village area. I'd like to see some regional economic development there which isn't a new idea, it's in the official community plan, it's just nothing's really happened there. The second pillar of the, of the campaign is 
fair and equal treatment of all taxpaying citizens. I've been on the receiving end of some biased treatment, and it's kind of a funny thing with this campaign since I launched the website and put my story out there. I've been contacted by a number of other residents who've experienced the same treatment. So that's another important aspect of the campaign. So, so you're saying that one of the things that you found is you haven't been treated fairly by the municipality? No, I'd say there's definitely an el a strong element of pull in the municipality. Or yes, I, I have been, I don't think I have been treated fairly by the current administration of Central Saanich. And, is, is, there, is there specific uh, issues that you have? or? Well, there is, and I will get into specifics as we get later into the campaign. But I'm, if you look at the website, you can see the, read about the treatment, the bylaw officer. I mean, I've had him actually physically try to fight me, which was really something that was almost comical. But I, uh, and there's really a wide array of it. And I don't want to focus on the negative, but that is a problem where it's a matter of who you are, not what the issue is, mm -hmm. how you get treated at City Hall, and that's not right in my opinion. I, I've hosted a number of all-candidate sessions up in, in that area, and uh, I, I believe I'm probably correct in saying that maybe candidates on occasion can fall into pro-development image or status quo, leaving things the way they are. Is that, would, would that be a fair assumption of the way that politics runs in, 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 that, uh, in that municipality? There's definitely uh, a favoritism towards stagnation. I'd say that's a good way to say it. There's, there's not a, a lot happening out there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I mean, Central Sands wants to maintain its rural feel, right? Yes. Yes. It's yeah. in, in that's, and you can do that and also have the regional economic development. If you look at the official community plan, uh, they're re in the process of redoing it, and I've put my input in for the revised community plan that you like to do it every five years but if you look at the one from 1999 it talks a lot about obviously containing the rural feel of central Sanders, which is important but also talks it talks a lot about regional economic growth and growing areas like brentwood bay and saniston village and creating centers of commerce so people aren't driving as far to pick their, their goods and services people are working locally things like that so that's a stated goal that is very popular in the community and it hasn't been acted on, and so that's a big part of my campaign to make that happen. See, the difference between my campaign or my what I'm going to do and what the other candidates are going to do is that the other candidates will talk about ideas, right? They write them down on pieces of paper. They will hire consultants to come in and tell them what they wrote down on the piece of paper, where I'll make it happen. And to do that, though, you're going to have to get council behind you, right? Yes. Because I mean, you're going to be one vote on council. Yes. And do you, will you run with a team, or do you think you'll you're run by yourself? I'll run by myself, but that's part of the reason why I'm going for the mayor position, is that that's the leader of the council, you chair the, you chair the meetings, and I feel from that position as mayor, I can lead the council to sustainable development and to develop a sustainable regional economic plan and actually execute what the official community plan has laid out while still maintaining that rural field. Okay, some tough questions for Sean McNulty, the candidate running for the running for the position of mayor in Central Saanich, 386-1161, star 1070. Are the numbers to dial up if you want to join the conversation this morning, or you can send us an email to talk at cfax1070.com. Now back to Joey Singwood and the CFAX Newsline on CFAX 1070. Sitting in from A-Channel News, Stephen Andrew. Good morning. We're talking with Sean McNulty, who has announced his candidacy for the position of mayor in Central Saanich. Uh, I would assume maybe going up against uh, Jack uh, Maher, right? If he runs again? If he runs again, yes. Chris Graham. If Chris Graham decides to run for mayor. Chris Graham, yep. Alison Habkirk, if she decides to run again. That's correct. So there you are in this field of candidates. What makes you different from the other candidates? I will do what I say I'll do. My campaign's about 100%. That kind of infers, Sean, that the other candidates haven't done what they've said they were going to do when they, when they get into office. Yes, Is that a fair thing? That, and Yeah, I think that would be a fair thing. And it's, not, uh, it's something that the voters could find out themselves if they looked at the official community plan. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, they've, it, they've wrote the plan, and it's not being followed. Where do you stand on amalgamation? An amalgamation? I like amalgamation. I think it's a good idea. So you, so you support uh, an amalgamated uh, Sandwich Peninsula, an amalgamated Greater Victoria area? What, what's, your, what's your position on that? Well, 
I definitely not with Victoria. It'd have to be ideally with Central Sandwich, North Sandwich, and Sydney. I don't know. I don't know necessarily think mayor and council. That'd be something you'd have to look at. But I think services is a slam dunk. I mean, uh, you get more output per tax dollars. It saves on the overhead cost by having all these, you know, three fire departments, three police departments. You know, mm -hmm. by I think amalgamating some of the services, there's a lot of benefits for the taxpayers on the peninsula there. But not a not a fully uniformed Greater Victoria area being amalgamated. Not with the with the Greater Victoria area. No, I, I wouldn't foresee uh, foresee that. I think the Sandwich Peninsula is unique to itself and and uh, should be kept that way. Sean McNulty, question for you from Sandage, uh, from Atlanta Popham. She says, Central Sandage has been an agricultural-based community. Your business is not agriculture-based and has been in conflict with agriculture. We'll get to that in just a second. What is your stand regarding the agricultural land reserve? So first of all, your business conflict with agriculture. Just give us the uh, the calls notes version of what's happened there. To be honest with you, Stephen, I'm not, uh, it's not a, Part of, like that's a separate issue from my it's, campaign, it, but it's going to come up. I mean, during it's, the campaign, it's going right? to come up. I what I'd say is this: is uh, I'm very proud of Island View Golf Center. I'm very proud of the staff: Scott Keenly side, Andrew Wintrub, Hoy Sangyu, and Haley Lupton. All the great people we have working there, and working there, and I'm very proud of the product and the service we deliver there. And yes, there has been some conflict, and it's a complicated issue. I will say that it's moving in the right direction. Uh, the owners of the golf center, and I know the owners of Silver Rill have met and I hope it resolves itself. I'm not personally involved in the talks so I can't comment on them. But, but you, th you think it's going to move in a good direction? I hope, a good direction. I hope it does because I, I, live, I live on the property and the last thing I want to do is fight with neighbors. Okay, so the question is what is your stand regarding the agricultural land reserve? That's well, lands that are put in obviously that are basically protected for agriculture. <laughs> yeah, well that's a very good question Stephen. That's a a very good question. How do I stand on it? Well, the Agricultural Land Reserve isn't governed by the municipal body. It's governed by the ALR. So as far as how I stand, it's not like a big influence. I think agriculture is important, but it's not, like I said, it's not something that the municipal body governs over. So it's not something that I've made a big... Uh, but a municipal body would have say, it would be able to influence, it would be, it would take positions, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. if the ALR uh, made decisions that were contrary to what the official committee plan was or to what the, the, the will of the community was, I mean, certainly it would be up to the municipal mm -hmm. politicians to stand up and say, hey, this is not right. So, I mean, you know... The, I see, yeah, I know I see what you're saying, Stephen. I would say I read the official community plan section what they have for the for uh, promote in terms of farm like I think farming is important for the region it's a major industry in the region I believe that the farmers know best what to do with farmland I mean that's who I'd be listening to if I was uh, I, I'm a big believer in property rights right if if a farmer wanted to, let's say, wasn't using a piece of land and wanted to rezone it, I think you have to take a good look at that because if they're not farming that land, I don't see why it shouldn't be utilized for other purposes. That being said, if a farmer, I like the idea of farmers having less taxes. Like I said, it's good, great for employment in the area. It's, it's picturesque. It's nice to look at. Uh, but, I mean, it'd really be, like the ALR in general, it's, it's a very general kind of notion, like, things that came forward regarding ALR, ALR, ALR lands, I'd be wanting to hear from the farmers and get their take on it. They're the ones farming the land. They're the ones mm -hmm. who have the most knowledge and on the subject. Is this something that you think that you will spend a lot of time doing over the next 12 months when, when, when it, up leading up to the election, talking with the farmers, getting more information on the ALR? I'm going to talk it seems, to it seems to me that maybe you don't have a fully... Uh, form position on, on the ALR right now. Would that, would that be a fair <clears throat> statement? Well, I just view it as a separate issue from municipal politics in the sense that we don't govern the ALR. Now, in terms of farmers or talking to farmers, I'm going to talk to the people of Central Sanch. I think, I, I don't like it when people group things in together, like the farmers or the business guys or the golfers or the seniors, you know, like we're people, right? And I want to hear from the people. So I want to hear from the farmers. I want to hear from the business people. I want to hear from the residents. You know, I'm not out there for one special interest group. I want to hear everyone's ideas. 386-1161, star 1070.
Stephen Andrew from A Channel News. And for Joe Easingwood this week on the CFAX 1070 Newsline, we're talking with Sean McNulty, who has announced his candidacy for the position of mayor in Central Sandage. Of course, you have to file all the papers, and that comes up uh, a little bit later. But your intent is to run once all that, uh, once uh, the, uh, the papers are drawn up and everything, you're, you're going to be... You're going to be running for the position of mayor, right? Definitely, yeah. I've already contacted the city hall and made arrangements to go Waited. see them. And, yeah, okay. ready, we're ready to go. CJ on the cell, good morning. Hi. Good morning. Um, Sean, I'm wondering how long you've lived in Central Saanich. Well, thanks for the uh, question, CJ. I've been living in Central Saanich off and on. I guess I first moved out here when I was 18. And then I moved to Vancouver for a bit, and then I've been living here now for, I guess, close to three years now. Okay, thank you. Because um, my family lived in Central Saanich and, since 1950, and uh, yes, we have far we had farmland, and I, I hate to see how much development's being done out in that area, and I hate to see the farmland gone. But second question is. Do you have any jurisdiction, if you're mayor, about the airplanes that have been flying awfully low since they've been rerouted the last couple of years? I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. I... Can you explain that just a, a little bit more, uh, CJ? Well, the last, oh, three to five years, airplanes have been flying. They've changed their direction, um, some of the planes from the airport. Um, I believe they're mostly the seaport planes or, or downtown planes, and they fly really low over our house, and sometimes even 3 in the morning. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing them. 3 in the morning? Wondering, yes, or it sounds like there's, there's planes flying at that time, and I'm just not sure whether it's something like... And what have you done about it? Uh, have you contacted anyone about this? Or? I haven't contacted anyone yet. Um, I thought I'd start now with, with Sean. Okay. Um, can we set up that the two of you can connect, uh, exchange numbers or something, so that uh, he can actually get the details of it? Because obviously it, it, it sounds like it may be, he may, be a little, may need a little bit more information on it. Yeah, no, actually, CJ, if you want to go to my website, www.seanfromair.com, all my contact information is available there, and I'd be interested in hearing more about it. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, do you, yeah, go ahead. I just want to make uh, one more comment there, CJ, and this is by no means uh, to be uh, taken in a derogatory fashion, but I, the, the question about the length of stay, that kind of gets back to my fair and equal treatment of all citizens of Central Saanich. Uh, I don't believe anyone should be treated any differently on the matter of time they've spent in the municipality or how long their families lived there. Whether you've been living there for three months or you've been living there for a hundred years, you should all be treated the same by the municipal government. Mm -hmm. That's a big you, part of the campaign. You know, I think it's an interesting thing, and I think, you know, from, from my experience, that, that this is a challenge that perhaps you, you will have to overcome. It, it is a... Uh, People are going to say, well, I've lived in this community for a long time. And, and I guess what they are maybe in a roundabout way are questioning your commitment to the community. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? I wouldn't take it like that. I'd say they're, they want to know about me because they want to know. They want to know how I guess yeah, concerned, I guess, dedicated uh, to the community I am. I. Uh, I'm not too worried about winning people over or anything. Like I was saying to you, it's it's a 100% transparent campaign. We didn't enter this political, uh, we didn't enter this uh, this uh, campaign to try to run a traditional mayor campaign where we're mm -hmm. trying to trying to trying to uh, pony up votes and you know sell out our values and all that stuff. I, I'm going out there. I'm going to say exactly where I stand. It's 100 percent transparent. And it's all going to be and on the if website. People like it. They can. If they like it. Vote for me because that's what I'm going to do. If okay. you don't like it, then, uh, yeah, don't then vote. you have the yeah, and you, you have the right to your own opinion. Uh, Ray in Central Sandage, uh, former Squamish mayor. Is this Ray Rice? Yes, it is. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning, Stephen. Uh, good morning, Stephen. Um, I'm very well, and uh, you know, thank thank you very much for letting me on. Yeah, I recently uh, moved to Central Saanich approximately two years ago uh, due to a, for a personal reasons, uh, similar to you with Stephen, uh, we're going through a, a, a difficult time uh, uh, relating to my wife and uh, you know, due, to, uh, due to cancer. Uh, there, uh, I'd like to, to ask uh, this gentleman one, uh, one question. Uh, there's been an, uh, uh, a lot of proposal uh, to do with Ian Vantrate, uh, 
with a, a massive development uh, on his property. Um, he, he indicates that uh, it will be on a portion that is non-ALR. However, uh, uh, there, it would uh, certainly impact that property, and it would impact agriculture in the entire region. So I'd like to know uh, what uh, Mr. McNulty's feelings are on this development. Has Mr. Van, uh, <coughs> Van Trait approached him? Will he be funded by Mr. Van Trait? And uh, I'd like to know um, what his position would be on this proposal. Thanks, Ray. Well, uh, first of all, I don't know about it negatively affecting agriculture for the whole region. I think that's a, that's a bit of an overstatement, but I, that's, a, that's a very good question, Ray. I, uh, I have a kind of a conflicting uh, two, two points of view. One is that it is unfarmable land that he's trying to redevelop, and I'm a big believer in individual property rights. Now, when you buy a piece of property, you know, it's zoned a certain way, so you not only enter into an agreement with the municipality, but you enter into one with your neighbors. Uh, they buy property next to you, expecting to be zoned a certain way. So, so the neighbors expect, would expect that to be farmland.